Hey, Josh, uh, I want to get your assessment on this year's Ryan Tannehill and um, how the Titans offense is different uh, from when they had Derrick Henry back there to now the version you're pre preparing for, which is them without Henry, like it's been since about midseason here. Uh, well, I would say when you start with Ryan Tannehill, you start with the intangibles. Uh, I, I think um, he he's definitely a tough minded quarterback. Um, he has the arm to make all the throws and does make all the throws. Uh, he can beat you with his feet, whether it's a designed run or whether he makes a play extend with his legs uh, in the pass game. Uh, he makes good decisions. He makes good reads. Um, I would say, I you know, whether I, I think their offensive philosophy is, um, you know, they're going to run the ball. They're going to use play action. Uh, they're going to get into manageable third downs and they're going to try to wear you down and they're going to play for 60 minutes because they're uh, they're a tough physical team. They're tough minded. And I think Ryan Tannehill embodies all that. And you mentioned tough and, and physical. Uh, so you still see those traits definitely even uh, since they've been without Derrick Henry. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, Derrick Henry's a good back. There's no question about it. But um, I, I think their their philosophy and what they try to do, and, and they have they have capable backs. Uh, they have a they have a very good scheme, um, and they have a very good offensive line, and they're going to be physical in all facets of the game. Uh, and you know we're, we're excited for the challenge. Obviously, this is the biggest game of the year for us. Uh, we're excited for it, and uh, we're going to need at our we're going to need to be at our best for sixty minutes because we're going to get that from Tennessee. Yeah. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Daniel. Hey, Josh. Uh, good afternoon. It was obviously a really big night for your entire defense, and Nick Needham kind of started that off with the pick six. Um, you know, the, the week before, we'd seen him play pretty much every snap at safety. Um, then he kind of goes back to nickel. He's played outside when when X and Byron run out. Just um, how does he kind of embody everything you look for in a Dolphins defensive player, not, not only on the field, but off the field? Well, I mean, I think it starts with his work ethic uh, and his constant desire to improve. And he puts in the work to do that. Um, he's mentally and physically tough. Uh, he's a put the team first guy. Uh, I think he's everything that you want uh, in a player in your program. And uh, it's obviously, you know, again, like I said, we usually, you know, we don't, we don't really celebrate individual success. We sub celebrate team success, but Nick is obviously a guy that all of us are happy for when, when, when he has some success out on the field. And, um, you know, and like I said, uh, we got a big challenge in front of us this week. So, and, uh, you know, I know Nick's already been in here and, uh, you know, getting prepared and ready to go for this week and whatever role that may be, um, you know, uh, he'll accept that challenge and he'll do his best uh, to be at his best. Travis. Hey, good afternoon, coach. Saw a cool stat that over the course of the winning streak, you guys have the highest sack rate when you rush four or fewer uh, rushers. Just wanted to get your take on, on how you've been able to get pressure with only rushing three or four and how important it is to your defense. Well, I, you know, anytime you can get pressure on um, a quarterback, obviously, uh, it opens up things for you in the pass game. And I think, again, a lot of times, you know, that's not just an individual thing that can, one, it could be the coverage um, is good enough to allow extra time to get there, or it could be, you know, just a great uh, individual rush, or it could be a team rush that's executed well uh, to get pressure on a quarterback. Um, and then I think, you know, allowing yourself to do a variety of different things and present, uh, you know, different rushes, whether you're rushing three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Um, you know, I think all of that puts a little bit of pressure uh, on the offense uh, as you go. And then again, it, there's, there's always elements to open up uh, based on what you're getting from a protection standpoint, uh, different ways that you can attack the protection that the uh, offense has given you. Joe? So Josh, when I was looking at the um, league statistics at the end of last night's game or early this morning, um, it jumped out at me that the, the Dolphins are now first in the NFL in sacks. Now, I know you've spoken about how that's a splash play and sometimes quarterback pressures and quarterback hits as impactful 
But I, I am curious, what, what is your opinion on the sack play and, and how it can change the dynamics of a, of a game? Well, I mean, obviously, I mean, we're always happy when we get sacks. I mean, you know, you, you, you could get a sack on first down that puts you behind the change. And I think, you know, when you listen to um, offensive coaches talk, they always talking about, you know, staying on track, staying in manageable situations. Uh, anytime you get a negative play or a sack, um, that's going to put them a little bit off track, which um, sometimes puts them into a different mentality. Uh, it shrinks their call sheet a little bit or, you know, it, you kind of have a little bit of a better idea of maybe what's coming as opposed to everything's available to them. Um, so, I, you know, and again, like it's not that we don't <laughs> – that we're not happy when we get sacks. Um, we just know that, you know, as a defense, to put pressure on the offensive line, to put pressure on the quarterback, you know, it's not always a sack that does that. Um, sometimes, you know – you can get pressure, you can get a tip ball, you can get an interception, which ends up being a pick six, kind of like what happened last night to start the game. So again, that wasn't a sack, but there was pressure, uh, the ball gets tipped, um, you know, and you know, and you end up able to have a success, successful play. But I think it all comes down to putting pressure on the offensive line and the quarterback in those situations. Um, and then obviously, you know, if they lose yardage, uh, we're all going to be happy with that. And then, you know, again, there's a lot of times when we have sack opportunities um, that, um, you know, you, you'll see our guys trying to attack the ball because, again, there's nothing more important than the football. So, you know, if uh, sacks are nice, but if we can get a strip sack and recover it, um, you know, that just made a good play, a great play, uh, if that makes sense. Thanks for the, the good explanation, Josh. Thank you. Sure. Hi, Josh. Uh, you, you guys have been consistent, generally successful against the run in this stretch. To you, has Wilkins improved against the run? Has Raekwon improved? Who else beyond those two might come to mind as players whose improvement against the run has pleased you? Well, I you know, again, and, you know, I'll, I'll credit, you know, Austin Clark and Anthony Campanelli, like th these guys have done a good job with, with, with these guys. And it really, it's a credit to the players, their work and their understanding. And, and it's one thing to um, improve your individual uh, run technique. And then two, to understand what's going on around you and how, you know, one particular block and the way that you play that affects a guy behind you, a guy beside you. Um, you know, I, I think we've uh, garnered a better understanding of that. And, uh, you know, and again, I think our players work ethic and their love for playing for each other and their joy to see success um, from others is really kind of been um, the catalyst for our improvement on that. I want to ask you about Landon Roberts as well. He seems to bring such a toughness. Uh, I mean, you have tough guys on your unit. What do you think of when you think of a Landon and what he brings to a defense? Well, he, you know, again, he's a good communicator. He's intelligent. Um, he, he's a physical player. Um, so, and, uh, he, and, he, and he loves football. Uh, he cares. He wants everybody to be on the same page. And, um, you know, he goes above and beyond to, to make sure that that's getting done. Uh, so, and again, uh, and we're going to need that to continue and we're going to need that to, to continue to improve because, you know, uh, we, need, we need our best football coming this week.